on the principal part of the teeter plan, which gets us really close to that 700 some odd thousand that our target was. The second is to direct the CEO to return to the board by December 9 with options for workforce reductions and or furloughs with the first $200,000 in funds available repaying the reserves. It wasn't the contingency, it was the reserves from which those 200000 came from. Thirdly, direct the CEO to reallocate funds within the water agency budget to fund the Scout Lake study process. I don't have a, I'm not putting a dollar figure in that because at this point we're not sure what that study amount is, but we can re reallocate the funds that are already within that budget unit. Fourthly, direct CEO to analyze the cost efficiency of providing services in Willits and the ownership operations of the Willits Service Center, returning to the board with a recommendation on future utilization. Direct the CEO to expedite the RFP on the provision of animal shelter services in Fort Bragg and, if warranted, proceed with the closure of the Fort Bragg Animal Shelter. And finally, eliminate the extra helpline item in Budget Unit 1010. That capsules the issues that, that I have heard and that I think would get us a good starting point on addressing these issues for next year. I have other comments I'll make, but that's the motion that I'll, I'll throw out at this point. Uh, I got one question on that motion. What is the impact of the extra help in 1010? Did you answer that? I'm sorry, who was that directed to? I was uh, busy. Jennifer working. can respond, I think. Jennifer, could you step up? That there? doesn't affect our existing staffing levels, right? No. Jennifer, the question is, what is the extra help dollars allocated in budget unit 1010? Do you, oh, Christy's I, behind you. I believe it's 3,500. Christy's coming in. I don't know if you can answer that for us. Christy Freeman, Clerk of the Board. Uh, extra help allocation in budget unit 1010 is, has been reduced to around 3,500, as Jennifer said. And our department is a heavy uh, publication deadline sensitive operation. Those funds have been reduced, but they're crucial to our ability to maintain production deadlines. Is your department fully staffed? My department is fully staffed, yes. And that's with five people? That's true. Okay, okay so um, to the maker of the motion, I have a question. There were five items or six items? Six. Six, okay. Eliminate extra help. Okay, 10, 10. All right. So that's my stab at a motion, Mr. Chairman. Okay, so there is a motion before us. Do I hear a second for that? Well, um, you know, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I mean, Mr. Pence. I, I have a little problem with that last one, but, you know, in an effort to move this forward, I, you know, it's not going to affect the staffing, you know, I've been one that's been fully supportive of getting the, the Board of Supervisors and the Clerk of Board staffing up to, to where we can keep the doors open. And uh, I think maybe that's something that we can give on. And uh, if it'll make for the adoption of this budget today, I'm, I'm willing to uh, second that motion. Okay, so that is a second then? Yes. Okay. So now we can have discussion on the motion. Supervisor Smith, I think, goes first. <clears throat> well, I think the, there are a number of concepts here that um, uh, some of which I embrace and some of which I, I certainly don't. The idea that we expedite the, expedite the RFP for the Fort Bragg Animal Shelter, that's already, in, uh, that's already occurred. And uh, my understanding is, at least the last I knew, deliberations on that contract are already in process. So I don't think we should be taking any actions to... Um, uh, constrict that process it's it already has been expedited and it's it's happening currently um, so I think that that that's certainly not a, a move that I would support without I, I wouldn't support that tying that into the budget process it might have budget implications it already has with respect to the reduction of dollars for the animal shelter on the coast in a much uh, reduced budget and that RFP is out there and um, I don't know the status of it in the last 
10 days or so, but prior to that, there were negotiations that couldn't be discussed because that's in fact what they were. So I don't, I don't think this board should take any action that would circumvent that or uh, interrupt that process. So, um, so I couldn't support that aspect of it. Okay, thank you. Supervisor, uh, you would just like to respond I, to that? Yeah, just if I may, Mr. Chairman. Uh, it is in the budget, it was part of the process. I'm not sure how this would jeopardize that process. The intent is to make sure that it's one, recognized and two, expedited. It's, it shouldn't affect the outcome of it, it's just the timing. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, Supervisor Colfax. Well, I identified three areas where that I thought needed attention. I do not think it's appropriate for us up here now to put the uh, try to put money on each of these. This is a function of responsibility of the CEO's office, and this is what we sloughed off on. It was not that we did not adequately examine these other things that Supervisor Delbar has uh, brought forward. And some of them are, are good ideas and probably need to be re-examined, but I think it would be utterly inappropriate up here to start uh, trying to cobble together something that will get us somewhere in the direction of so of having items there so we tear down one part of the structure in order to shore up another part basically what we have to do is take another f 